Welcome back. More than half of Mexico's working population does not have formal jobs. Among them, the large number of people selling cheap goods in Mexico City's metro. We call them Bagon Eros. But now the government has ordered them to stop selling. John Holman reports from Mexico City. A working life lived in tunnels beneath neon lights. In the subterranean world of the metro, Juan Carlos keeps moving. To the sound of music from the speakers in his backpack, he sells pirate CDs to the passengers. In the country at the moment, there's a lot of unemployment, and the minimum salary here isn't enough to live off. I rent, and I've got two children, and I have to find a way to bring money home. Word games, screwdrivers, batteries, even jokes. There is an army of about 6,000 vendors, known as bagoneros, changing trains, plying their trade. They work in highly organized unions, paying their powerful leaders for the right to sell down here. Now the Mexico City government has launched a campaign to kick them out of the metro, sending in reinforcements of over 500 police. Joel Ortega, the metro director, says Bagoneros attack passengers. He passed us this video as evidence. But he couldn't tell us how many of these attacks had taken place. The Bagoneros have become more and more violent. They have to and will leave the metro. It's music sellers like Juan Carlos that provoke the most complaints. Commuter Antonia Dominguez shows me the paper she puts in her ears every day to block out the sound. There is a lot of need and this is a way to earn money, but a lot of the time they're too loud and they're aggressive if you say something against them. The Bagoneros are down here because they have few other options says Sandra Ruiz. She's been researching them for years. Normally, Bagoneros are young people without higher education, people from other places that couldn't find formal work, people trying to get away from crime, single mothers. What opportunities have, have these people got then if they, if they kick them out of the metro? They won't have any opportunities to find work. If those existed, they would have found them already. I asked Joel Ortega if metro authorities are working with Bagoneros to help them find other jobs. Our job is transport. I wish we could help them, but they have to look for other jobs, and they have to do it outside of the metro. Bad news for those who have worked here most of their lives. Many of the Bagoneros have been walking these trains selling their products for years, and they don't see themselves as a nuisance, but as an integral part of the metro system. We found our way to a mass meeting of Bagoneros underground to see how they intended to deal with the government crackdown. After the meeting, leader Javier Becerril told us his union had made a deal with authorities to send a quota of workers per day to be fined and temporarily held. In return, the rest of them would be left alone. It's an agreement between us. The police operations happen anyway, and even if you don't give them your workers, they'll grab them. So if there's a way to make an agreement with them, the quicker they go, the quicker they get back to work. The metro authorities strongly deny his version and say in six months, the Bagoneros will be gone. Juan Carlos remains defiant. For him, there is too much at stake to go quietly. We're not just going to leave the metro just like that, because it's our source of income. It's what we do. We're not robbing or damaging any of the passengers. He can only keep moving from train to train. One song away from a sail, one step ahead of the law. John Holman, CCTV, Mexico City.